Jumbo. This is our seventh example. And it is a fairly straightforward one. It has one little curveball, but it's not too big an issue. We see a subscript of 1 and 2, so we go 1, 2, 1, 2. All of the sulfur and oxygen are both group 6, so it's all about 6s here. And it totals 18 valence electrons. On this side, in a perfect Barney world, it would have 24 electrons. So we have to smear these 18 out electrons to give the effect that if we had 24. Difference is 6, so 6 electrons will be involved in 3 bonds. Sulfur goes in the middle because we only have one of it. That means we put an oxygen on either side. Now it would be really nice if we had two bonds or four because that splits in two and becomes very symmetrical. We have three so we have no choice but to put a single bond on one side and a double bond on the other. Now if we had it flipped around if that was double and that single, fine, no problem. All right, we've got to make things happy. That sulfur needs another, I better make it so you can actually see it. It needs another pair of electrons. Now the sulfur has eight electrons around it. This oxygen we have to add six more. It now has eight around it and this oxygen has four around it already so it needs four more. And that is done. That's the correct Lewis structure but we want to double check and every time you do one you can double check. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Eighteen dots, eighteen electrons. That matches up one, two, three bonds, that matches up. So we go and go vump and vump and vump and remember that's a double bond. This becomes really important in chemistry 11 when we do molecular structures where we have to go from a Lewis structure to figure out the shape. It turns out that this is what we call a resonant structure. It's not perfectly accurate. In fact, we wouldn't actually get a single and double bond to be some sort of blend of them. But for Lewis structure, that is perfect. It is just a ton of fun. Bon appetit.